This is the Cape Cod Canal Railroad Bridge, one of the most unique rail bridges in the country, and the leading factor that establishes what trains can run to the Cape and when. But what makes this bridge so special, and what gives it so much power? Come along and find out. To understand how this bridge works, you must first understand what train line goes over it. Known as the Cape Main, this line spans from Bay Interlocking just east of Middleborough Station to Hyannis. Owned and operated by the Mass Coastal Railroad, the Cape Main sees three services on the busiest days of the week. Mass Coastal's energy trains, Cape Cod Central Railroad tourist trains, and the MBTA CCRTA Cape Flyer. The Energy Train is a year-round, six times per week trash train that carries Cape Cod's trash off the island and to plants that burn the trash for use as energy. The tourist trains run on selected days, primarily during the summer months, from Hyannis to various locations near the Cape Cod Canal. Various forms of service include midday canal excursions with onboard narrations, luncheon trains, and the all too popular dinner train. These trains often operate with Cape Cod Central's two historic ex New Haven FL9 locomotives. Lastly, the Cape Flyer is a service from Boston to Hyannis, operated by the Cape Cod Regional Transit Authority in collaborations with MassDOT and the MBTA. Running Friday to Sunday, and on most holidays, this summer service provides a great mode of transit for people to get to the Cape. Whether you plan on doing a day at the beach or a bike trip, the Cape Flyer can and will get you there in comfort. The Cape Main has quite the history, too. Here we are at the historic Sandwich Station in Sandwich, Massachusetts. This stop is not served by the Cape Flyer but instead occasional excursion trains. Built in 1848, this station once served as the terminus of the Cape Main when the Cape Cod Branch Railroad extended their line from Middleborough to Sandwich. Year-round passenger service operated here under the New Haven Railroad, how fitting, until 1959, with service continuing on the weekends in the summer until 1964. The station saw spotty service in years following until 1986, when Amtrak launched their Cape Cotter service from New York City to Hyannis. Though the Cape Flyer doesn't serve this stop, the Cape Cod Central Railroad treats it as a whistle stop, which is essentially a flag stop in commuter railroad terms. Speaking of Cape Central, it seems to be just about lunchtime, which means the Cape Cod Canal excursion train should be headed our way. Here we see it from the Sandwich Mini Golf Course, just east of the station. This historic set of equipment will head all the way to the canal bridge before turning around and heading back to Hyannis. These two FL9s saw service on the New Haven Railroad and beyond from the early 1960s to the late 1990s. The FL9 models are dual-mode locomotives that were specially made to operate in the tunnels of Penn and Grand Central stations. Cape Cod Central purchased these two from the Connecticut Department of Transportation. About an hour after passing westbound, the excursion train passes us eastbound on its way back to Hyannis.
Moving to the west of the canal lies a much more robust freight presence. Mass Coastal centralizes much of their operation around CMAS, a waste-to-energy facility in West Wareham. It is here where the energy trains that travel over the canal bridge originate, as well as other locals that interchange with CSX around the south coast. Seen here is MC1, which will be heading to Middleborough Yard to take some cars from CSX. Though this move won't cross the canal, it still serves the Cape. After all, CMAS and its two Cape-based facilities were created to reduce trash truck traffic over the Cape Cod road bridges and bring this industry onto the rails. Now, let's make our way to the banks of the Cape Cod Canal to watch the bridge process. Built by the Public Works in 1935, the Cape Cod Canal Railroad Bridge was built for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, who currently operate the span. When built, the bridge was considered the longest vertical lift span in the world. The center span of the bridge weighs approximately 2,200 tons with two 1,100-ton counterweights in each tower. When down, the bridge only gives about 7 feet of clearance, meaning some of the smallest watercraft cannot even clear the bridge. Because of this, the Army Corps of Engineers isn't too keen on lowering the bridge many times. Unlike most railroad bridges, which are owned by the railroad themselves and the state, this bridge is considered a federal asset. Because the Army Corps of Engineers also control the canal, but do not own the railroad tracks outside the bridge, they will logically give their asset more priority. So, it makes sense that they would be less giving to increasing train traffic over the bridge, because every time a train crosses, boat traffic is stopped almost completely. In order to get the bridge to go down, the train crew must call the bridge tender and inform them of their approach to the span. It takes almost two minutes for the span to lower, and around the same amount of time for the train to cross it. Sitting here on the banks, I noticed a whole assortment of different kinds of watercraft. Sailboats, yachts, motorboats. Hundreds of these boats dart across the canal each day. By now, the dinner train is on the approach and they call the bridge requesting it to be lowered. The bridge tenders work in this extension located on the north end of the west tower. Now, I'm not sure how many people are on staff at once, but it sure looks like they have room for lots of people in there. Anyways, the dinner train is nearby, so let's get in position to film the span coming down.
Now that the bridge is down, the signal displays a green, and the dinner train makes its way around the corner. The track curving to the left is the Cape Main, which takes tourist trains and the flyer to Hyannis, and energy trains to the Yarmouth transfer facility. The track to the right takes excursion trains to Falmouth, and other energy trains to the Otis Air Force Base transfer station. Once this train clears the bridge, it will change ends at Buzzards Bay Station. The dispatcher, who is based in Wisconsin, yes, I'm not kidding, moves the switch to the Falmouth branch. From here, the dinner train will move down the branch to Falmouth Station, and then turn back and hold for the Cape Flyer here at the bridge. Cape Flyer will use this bridge around 7.30 for its return trip to Boston.
just down the line at Bourne Station, we see them pull in. Above us is the Bourne Bridge. And just down the road is the Sagamore Bridge. These two structures provide the only road traffic onto the Cape. I'll admit, it's pretty nice getting on a quick train while people above you are stuck in traffic. And with that, we find ourselves at the end of our adventure. I hope you learned a thing or two more about how railroading works out on the Cape. But until next time, I will see you all again soon, out there on the rails.